Well, howdy do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mac Buskus, and I got me a lightsaber. <laughs> Look at this beauty. Oh, yeah. I just got up from uh, Neo, Neo Sabers. The real one this time. Uh, watch out for scam sites, please. <laughs> Just go directly to the source. Because I got... I don't know if I want to say scammed, but... The scam website just stopped existing. For, uh, you know... <laughs> but... I guess I, sh I should have known it was a scam since... They only had to, had to be paid like 13 bucks. So, yeah, I had to take care of that. So, anyway, got it from the real Neo Sabers, and they've so far have uh, done me well. This is high, uh, very high quality lightsaber, and I've wanted one for a long time. And I'm happy that I got it, and there we go. Now you're wondering why I was gone for a long time. It's just depression, anxiety, uh, high blood pressure. Uh, yeah, it's just many things I don't want to get into right now. But let's do what we came here to do, ladies and gentlemen. Let's play Wrestling Jeopardy. Okay, so I'm going to be recording the, these last two ones since I need to make up for lost time. So I'm not going to like back to back in one video because that would be too long. Just this video and then the next one, which is the Summer Slime one right here. So, okay, so here we go. Hello and welcome once again to Wrestling Jeopardy, the only like interactive pro wrestling trivia challenge on YouTube where you're the contestant. I'm your host, Kevin J. Callis. And I hope you're ready to test your Her knowledge angle. and go for the gold in this episode. <laughs> and with that, let's go to the board now and check out the categories. I love it when wrestling you'll be quizzed silly. on. Starting with oh. former Olympians, followed by Viva la France. Next up is Ooh la la. And then we have fake accents. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, who is Andre the Giant? Is that an answer to a question? <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, uh, just wondering who is Andre the Giant. <laughs> But let's kick things off with the 200 point round, the easiest round in Wrestling Jeopardy. And I hope you go five for five and don't choke. <laughs> hey, how about getting your foot off my shoulder? <laughs> Kicking things off with former oh, Olympians for 200. Nobody has ever made their Olympic success into more of a gimmick than this wrestler who won a gold medal in 1996 with a broken freaking neck. Kurt? Angle. <laughs> and the correct answer, who is Kurt Angle? You got one of these? I didn't think so. We're on to Viva oh. la France for 200. This fabulous French language commentator for WWE is the brother of the Mountie, Jacques Rougeau. Oh, that I don't know. Now, technically, the French commentary team got eliminated a couple of years ago, but during the 90s and after that for really? a while, Raymond Rougeau was a fabulous French play-by-play -play commentator. Moving on to Oula for know 200. That. This arrogant French-Canadian faction consisted of René Dupree, Sylvain Grenier, and American turncoat Rob Conway. Uh, it's not the un-Americans. That's Christian and... Hold on. 
And that would be la who is la resistance. Get it? Ooh la la, la resistance. Come on, work with me, people. I should have got I that. I speak a little French. You're an ass bite. Pardon my French. <laughs> and that brings us to fake accents for Norma two. Tom, this wrestler's Cuban accent was based on actor Al Pacino's character Tony Montana from the 1983 movie Scarface. That'd be uh, Reza Ramon. The correct answer, who is Razor Ramon? I am somebody important, Chico. And let's finish up the 200 point round with who was Andre the Giant. As part of a storyline, Andre the Giant was suspended from WWF in April of 1986, allowing him the time off needed to film this movie. It was the Princess Bride, one of my favorites. And that would be the one and only what is the Princess Bride? Beat it, or I'll call the Brute Squad. I'm on the Brute Squad. You are the, the Brute Squad. squad. <laughs> All right, moving on to the fourth You are the Brute Squad. Now, hopefully <laughs> you went five for five there and didn't choke, like I said. Andre so enjoyed flatulence. Nice. Let's go back to oh, the former Olympians. <laughs> this super heavyweight was voted captain of the United States weightlifting team in 1996. However, a back injury forced him to drop out of the competition and finish a disappointing 14th place. Is that Mark Henry? Debuting in the yeah. WWF just two weeks after the Summer Games closing ceremonies, the correct answer, who is Mark Henry? And that brings us to Viva la France for four. Despite uncanny physical similarities, DreamWorks Studio has never officially addressed the rumor that this animated ogre character was based on the appearance of Maurice Tillet, AKA the French Angel. That would be Shrek. That would be Shrek 2, Day of the Knock. <laughs> and the correct answer, who is Shrek? Isn't he cute? He looks just like you. Of course. Really? No. <laughs> and we're on to <laughs> Ooh La La. For Ooh -la. La. The torrid love affair between Vicky Guerrero and Edge saw the creation of this stable. La Familia? I think it was La Familia. Consisting of yeah. Zack Ryder, Kurt Hawkins, Chava Guerrero, Edge, Vicky, and Bam Neely. The correct answer, who is La Familia? And let's move on now to fake accents for four. Despite having a French surname in real life, this wrestler strained aristocratic accent in WCW stunk worse than Pepe Le Pew. Uh, was, uh, oh, crap. That was Triple H. The correct answer Jean -Paul who is Jean-Paul Levesque, a.k.a. The Game, Triple H. Yeah, I have he had said every it. woman I have ever wanted, but the one thing that I have never had is a championship. And let's finish up the 400-point round. Who is okay. Andre the Giant? For Andre, this tag team was a lifeline, allowing him to continue his wrestling career despite health issues, while Haku carried the bulk of the in-ring action. Oh, uh, was it? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, that sucks. And that would be who were the Colossal Connection. Big man, big fart. <laughs> All right, 10 questions down, 15 to go, plus Final Jeopardy and a daily double. If you're having a good time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also the ringy dingy notification icon bell so you get notified whenever we come out with a brand new episode of Wrestling Jeopardy. Je ne sais quoi, baby. Heading back over to <laughs> former Olympians <laughs> for 600. Oh, rock. This second ever WWF Intercontinental Champion was so strong that he represented the United States in weightlifting at the 1972 Olympics in Munich. Oh, I don't know. Even though Ken Patera didn't earn uh, a medal, his military press was the third most out of 13 competitors who competed in the 110 kilogram category. And that brings us to Viva la France for six. This self-proclaimed number one Frenchman with the shiny sequin glove spent much of the rock and wrestling era of the 1980s as a non-stop jobbing machine. Oh, buddy. Mm. 
Uh... And a fun little fact, he also wrestled in the first ever WWF match televised on the USA Network against Tito Santana. However, the correct answer we're talking about here, who was Rene Goulet? Hmm. And we're on to Ulala for 600. Due to his propensity for bashing his opponents with a steel chair, this luchador earned the well-deserved nickname, the chairman of WCW. Uh, it's not Eddie. Uh, La Parca? And the correct answer yeah. who is La Parca. Got it, just in time. And that brings us to fake accents for 600. Oh, there it is. All right, here we go. All right, the Daily Double is here. Fake accents is the category. Think about how many good, bad, and ugly accents there have been throughout the years in wrestling. And place your wager now. There we go. All right, time is up. Let's go to the Daily Double clue in fake accents. Tom Brandy was tapped to play this Italian character who tried his best to win over the fans by saying, I like it to tell all you beautiful people that I love you. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, sincerely. Oh, I'm going to lose this one. I don't know. Mamma mia, who could forget about this correct answer? Who? Is Salvatore sincere? He likes to tell all of the beautiful people Salvatore loves you all. <laughs> <laughs> and let's finish up the 600 point round with who is Andre the Giant. The reason why Andre was a giant was due to a rare condition called acromegaly, a disorder caused by a tumor resting on this gland, leading to excess production of growth hormone. His pituitary gland. And that would be, what is the pituitary gland? All right, jumping back to former Olympians for 800. This wrestler's bronze medal in heavyweight judo at the 1976 Summer Games made him the first African-American to win a solo Olympic Games medal in a sport other than boxing or track and field. Huh. I don't know. And that would be... Who was Bad News Brown? Nice. Let me give you spineless cockroaches and you beer belly sharecroppers a little lesson in history. <laughs> We're on to Viva la France for eight. Good stage. Known as the Flying Frenchman, this wrestler was a decorated champion who helped revolutionize pro wrestling with his acrobatic high flying style. Hmm. <sighs> I don't know. And the correct answer, who was Edouard Carpentier? Moving on to Ulala for 800. During her time spent wrestling in Mexico, Taya Valkyrie was given this nickname by the late Pero Aguayo Jr., which translates to mean crazy white girl or crazy blonde. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I still can't get over how she bombed in NXT as Frankie Monet, but the correct answer here, who is La Huera Loca? Bringing us back to fake accents for 800. In 2021, Apollo Crews debuted as a new character where he declared himself Nigerian royalty, began to speak with a fake accent, and defeated Big E at WrestleMania 37 in this special stipulation match. Is that like a Nigerian drum match or something? Who could forget about the famous Nigerian drum match? <laughs> and let's finish up the 800 point rounds with who is Andre the Giant. Andre began his career wrestling under the ring name Giant Frere. I'd probably botch that. Giant Frere. Soon became known as this when he joined the International Wrestling Enterprise in Japan. Uh, 
Uh-oh. Now, in real life, Andre's name was Andre Rusimov, so he just took his last name oh. and he got a new moniker for his first name. He was called Monster Rusimov. All right, and we've reached the most difficult round in wrestling Jeopardy, the thousand point round. The steel cage begins to lower, the ominous music begins to play. You know what the drill is. Get your thinking caps on. Let's go. Five more questions here. Kicking it off with former Olympians. Although he didn't win any medals at the 2004 Summer Olympics, Jeff Cobb still had the honor of being the flag bearer for this Pacific Island country during the opening ceremony. Uh, uh, Tonga? No. Known for his work in New Japan, AEW, and Lucha Underground, Mr. Athletic Guam. had the I honor see. of being the flag bearer for his home country of Guam. Okay. And that brings us to the final clue from Viva la France, paying homage to their French heritage and a 1970s tag team of the same name, the duo of Marcus Louis and Sylvester Lafort dubbed themselves this while wrestling in NXT. <sighs> I don't know. This a fitting hard. tribute to the French Foreign Legion and the team of Sergeant Jacques Goulet and Private Don Fargo, these Frenchmen were called the Legionnaires. I see. Moving on to Ooh La La for 1,000. In November 2023, Roosh confirmed via social media that Andrade El Idolo was no longer a member of this faction in AEW. Ah, see, I don't watch AEW. Oh, so, I don't know. Sending out a tweet on X, El Toro Blanco confirmed that himself, Tralistico, Preston Vance, and Jose the Assistant were the only members of La Faction in Gabernable. And we're on to the final fake accent. Cool. Introduced to the WWE Universe as Rusev's social ambassador, Lana's Russian accent was so ravishing because she spent a large chunk of her childhood living in this Eastern European country. Uh, yeah. Austria? Originally from Florida, Lana fooled a lot of people into thinking she was Russian because her accent was so believable, Latvia. having spent her childhood being raised in Latvia. And let's close what? out the regular Wrestling Jeopardy round with who is Andre the Giant for a thousand. Contrary to popular belief, Hulk Hogan was not the first wrestler to ever slam Andre. This True. Japanese wrestler did in a best two out of three falls match. Uh, hmm. okay. Now in the pre-internet age, only the most invested fan would have known that before WrestleMania three, Andre had been body slammed more than 13 times with the first known wrestler to accomplish this strong feat Kobashi. being strong Kobayashi. Kobayashi. Oh. All right, don't go anywhere. It's Final Jeopardy time. Let's find out what this episode's Final Jeopardy category is. Napoleon complexes. Some wrestlers have been known to compensate for their below average height by turning themselves into bullies to boost their low self-esteem. In essence, short man syndrome is real and has its own history in professional wrestling. All right, so think about what Napoleon complexes <sighs> you think exist or existed in pro wrestling and place your wager and now. Now this is gonna be tough. All right, time's up, let's go to the final Jeopardy. As I always do. In his 2012 documentary titled, I Walk Alone, Batista recalls his tryout with WCW, stating that this half pint trainer had a real bad Napoleon complex and told Dave he'd never become a wrestler. Good luck. Oh. I'm just sick Kevin Sullivan. I don't know if it's true. In his 2012 documentary titled I Walk Alone, Batista recalls his tryout with WCW stating that this half-pint trainer had a real bad Napoleon complex 
and told Dave he'd never become a wrestler. Now, before the WWE Performance Center, the WCW Power Plant was the place for up-and-comers to learn the sport of pro wrestling. And it was there where Batista spent a day doing push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and being screamed at by uh, lead trainer Dwayne Bruce, I, I who was also known as Sergeant solid. Buddy Lee Parker of the State Patrol, or Sarge for short. No pun intended. Yep, as usual. Ah, uh, yeah, I was just taking a wild stab in the dark. It was Kevin Sullivan. No, it was Sarge. So, yeah, I was wildly wrong on that. So, that'll do it for this edition of Wrestling Jeopardy with Kevin J. Callis. Yeah. Uh, and we will see you next time.